game. The Allegri teams. Okay. Uh, uh, United uh, one, Chelsea won. I think I think this is a game that, in all honesty, football punters love this game because they're always guaranteed of one. It will be a job. <laughs> you know, it's quite funny. It's quite funny. Apart from, I'm going to pull out the last five seasons these guys have met. We'll take out the 4 1 win at Old Trafford and we'll take out the 4 3 defeat at Stamford last season. Almost every fixture between you guys has ended in a draw. Since then. Actually, this is the 20th draw, if I'm right. Can you imagine? So far between you guys. This is the most drawn fixture in the Premier League. Um, personally, I felt. United could have taken all three points. All three points. Yes, because I watched the game. I watched the game. I took time to watch the game. Yes. And what I was seeing was, I was seeing a United side which I haven't seen in a long while. You know, honestly, I think the major culprit in yesterday's draw will be Ganacho. Ganacho. Thank you. Yes. It will be Ganacho. You see, look. Hmm? There's one thing about youngsters who tend to become the star men of their club sites. As a youngster, the one thing you should never lose focus of is your humble beginnings. Never forget where you're coming from. Because the point whereby you start to forget where you're coming from, then you will start to have problems. I think Ganacho has already got it into his head that he's he's going, like to he's going to be unventurable. Yeah. It's unbenchable, and we are seeing something that we shouldn't be seeing. I'm seeing a player who tends to be selfish. Hmm. Yeah, I can give you a lot of instances in that game yesterday whereby all Ganacho needed oh. to do was just Your send a diagonal pass. pass, send a diagonal pass, and you will get the goals. It's look, we accept. Chelsea's central defense is rubbish. We're not arguing that fact. We are accepting it. Because um, apart from the fact that defense is rubbish, believe you me, personally for me, I think one keeper you would like to go one-on-one -on -one against is actually Robert Sanchez. Because Sanchez has the tendency to make mistakes. Take, for example, the United penalty yesterday. Yeah. In all honesty, all he needed to do was just guide that area honor was honor was going nowhere no he was way. basically turning Absolutely. he was either going to turn that ball back or what ball was going to the corner was going to the corner that was basically a goal kick he had already touched the ball out you could just have left him why did you feel like you needed to just make an attempt to get the ball when you knew definitely it was a losing attempt you got the player's leg it was a penalty dead and accurate and united scored then on the other end and not too long united does the same thing <laughs> corner is coming in for god's sake you're going to clear that no, corner no, clear no. it as far no, away no. as possible you just basically handed over that ball to that Moses Saicedo. and Moses Saicedo, i know very well we do no other thing except what he did which was shoot and if you've noticed one thing Saicedo has four goals for chelsea since he was signed two of those goals have come against united <laughs> and both of those goals have basically been shots that tells you something i think the person who fought for that goal was actually who played two for united in that game? uh was Dalo. it Dalo? Yeah. Our fourth thing for that because that bar was your position. Your position. What were you doing in center? I don't know. What were you doing in center? You see, sometimes we always tend to have this debate on zona marking and man marking. I agree. It's a debate that's not going to end till tomorrow. But the thing is this as a defender or as a team player, you need to be able to have a balance between both of them. You need to know when to have your man marking. I need to know when you and have your, your zonal marking. Zona marking. Mm -hmm. That particular chance needed a zonal marking. Okay. 
we know how it works. You have your two central defensive players in the center. You have your two on the left hand of the bar and your three on the right hand of the bar. Just in case any loose ball comes in, you're giving the goalkeeper extra cover. Absolutely. You know your defensive players will come back to come and shield as well. Too. So basically, you're leaving only one or two men up front. That was what I expected for that chance. I felt they left it. They did their best to cover up in the 18, Same. but outside the box was left open, and that was what actually left to go. Um, apart from that, I think I think um I think it seems like Vanessa Loy has finally gotten. But you know, there's to... one thing I want to quickly ask you about Vanessa Loy now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The guy wants to stay. There's oh, there's a discussion around the man you camp right now that they don't want as an assistant they, don't, they, they no they don't like for me i don't want the guy his desperation is too it's appalling like he's so desperate to be the come as assistant and i don't want that kind of a thing <sighs> me, I, I i i think i think i think for me for me i think this is a situation that reminded me of um for the young bird when when I M. A. was sacked, sacked. Oh, remember yeah. Youngberg was actually his assistant, assistant, yes. and Youngberg took charge of took charge. one match. He took charge of just one match. Yeah. And after the game, when we heard that the talks were coming in that Mikel Arteta was actually coming back to take over as manager of the team, Youngberg did one thing I would say respect him. He said he wanted to go and try his work house. Because he knows that if he's actually going to be in the running for handling a job, mm. definitely the one place you do not want to actually start it is Arsenal. Awesome. Because of the fact that at this point, let's be realistic. Let's forget the fact that we had some challenges and everything. Arsenal is a big side. It's very, very rare for a rookie to take charge of a big side and succeed basically immediately. It's, it's rare. Good. Very it's rare. very rare. The only exceptions you had so far are Roberto De Matteo at Chelsea when he took over to actually win the Champions League. He was successful in doing that. We know yeah. what happened the next season. They then out. it dawned that yes, this is a big job. <laughs> you were only lucky the first time around. Yeah, just, this time is not going to work. So much. Exactly. Now, and Arteta, because of the fact that I think Arteta's case was the fact that he took some lessons from someone who I basically can call the best, the best manager. No, I'll call him second best because as far as I'm concerned, sorry, no one compares to Don, Don Carlo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I Don Carlo is the best coach in the world. Pep is a close second. Yeah. So I think his own case was he learned from, uh, from Pep and he took his cues and added it to what he learned and was able to succeed. Because I think, basically, Arsenal basically play almost the same thing that Man City does. The same pattern, basically. So I think that was the advantage he had. For Wood Van Nistelrooy, I would say, look, yes. I understand the passion you have for United. I understand it totally. But the fact that it didn't take United long in fact maybe before they could even let go of everything hack they had already started to talk to other managers i think that could tell you clearly that you were never were not... in the running for the job Beautiful. so if you ask me if you ask me from being head coach at psv to coming down to work under ten hag as his assistant I could understand the fact that he's a fellow Dutchman like you. Mm. I could understand the fact that the United DNA is present. Mm. But for the life of me, in all honesty, why would you want to still remain assistant it's, when it's obvious that they don't want you as first choice? He's just begging, just look talking because like... Uh, I want personally this, I for me, because personally for me, if there's one thing I have understood about coaches, it's this. Anytime a coach moves to a new club, you are guaranteed that his backroom staff, his loyal staff, will also move with him. Hmm. It's expected. 
you know Amorim is going to bring in his backroom staff. Yeah. To be honest with you, with what Amorim is bringing in, you are not going to be assistant. You might likely be maybe one of the technical staff. You might most likely be fourth or fifth choice. They are going to demote you, basically, because his close confidence, we have access to him more than you will. More, Forget more the fact that you are basically a legend at United. These guys will have more access to the manager than you will. So if you ask me, hmm. why stay? Why? Exactly. Why stay? I can tell you a club that basically we need you right now. You could go to Heavenville because as far as I'm concerned, I don't see what my is doing there. The guy is getting smacked every blessed day. So what's the <laughs> point? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the point? <laughs> Honestly. I personally now. feel I personally feel like Easy. if Venezuela wants to stake a claim for the United job, he has two options. He has to go to another top side in Europe, vie for the job, get the job, and prove that you have what it takes to come over and take over at United. Or you could go to another club in the Premier League that I feel needs a new manager. For example, West Ham. Yeah. Shake some things up. If you don't, you don't even need to go to West Ham. You could even go to the Championship. Personally, I feel, I feel the Championship is one league that is being overlooked. See, because of the fact that they don't have the financial method to actually stand up to the big boys in the Premier League. But the truth is this: there are a lot of sides in the Championship that just need a manager with a different mentality. Yeah. And when you actually get in there, showcase what you've got. Start getting results. Yeah. Who knows? If Amory comes in and he cannot deliver, then we could say, okay, fine. We already have someone who actually has shown the potential to actually do the job. He's been here before. Yeah. We give him the job. Exactly. So for me, I don't see why he's begging. I feel like he's selling himself like short. Like he's telling all. his capabilities short for me. So I think maybe he should actually do what I expect him to do, which is just let the guy come and take over the job and do what you can do. Look for somewhere else and establish I mean, yourself and leave, basically. 